Hello, my name is Dr. Gabriella Williams, and I am one of the medical science liaisons and pharmacogenetic consultants here at Genomind. Today, I will be walking you through a sample of our Genomind Professional PGX Express report. Let's start by discussing where and how to access patient reports. All patient reports can be accessed and viewed through your Genomind Clinician portal. Once logged in, you will simply click on the results tab at the top of the page, choose the appropriate practice location as applicable, and then find or search for your patient by name. You will then be able to view that individual patient's report. To learn more about how to navigate the rest of the clinician portal, check out our clinician portal demo video. Our panel provides information on 24 pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic genes, as well as the therapeutic implications and the clinical impact these variants may have on common medications utilized in psychiatric and neurologic conditions. Starting on page 3 of the patient report, you will find our gene variations pages. The first part of these gene variations pages will highlight our pharmacodynamic genes. Our report highlights 15 pharmacodynamic genes that encode for proteins that influence sensitivity to medications. You will find the specific gene, as well as the patient-specific genotype, on the left side of the page. Additionally, the information presented in brackets underneath the genotype highlights the associated activity, response, sensitivity, or risk for that particular genotype. This is also known as the phenotype. Anything highlighted in red on the report will indicate a risk, caution, or change in activity or sensitivity, whereas information highlighted in blue confers an improved odds of response or a protective factor against tolerability concerns. Finally, anything denoted in green on the report is indicative of normal activity or normal response related to that specific gene. Moving into the center and right of the page, you will see the therapeutic implications and clinical impact columns. In these sections of the report, we provide more in-depth information about the gene itself and the implications a specific genotype may have, as well as the clinical applicability of this information. This information is further highlighted with intuitive icons signaling alert or caution or pharmacogenetic guided options in the guide tab. Let's look at the SLC6A4 gene in a patient diagnosed with major depressive disorder as an example here. SLC6A4 is the gene encoding for the synaptic protein responsible for serotonin reuptake. This patient has the SS genotype, which has been associated with a lower likelihood of depression remission and increased side effect risk with SSRIs and Caucasians. You'll see the caution symbol under the guide column, meaning this is information we would like the clinician to be alerted to. Looking at the clinical impact of this genotype, clinicians may consider to assess other non-SSRI medication options for their patient, as clinically appropriate. The second part of the gene variations pages focuses on our pharmacokinetic genes. The Genomind Professional PGX Express report highlights nine pharmacokinetic genes associated with drug metabolism, absorption, or penetration. Variants in these genes may lead to alterations in blood or brain levels of medications, also denoted on our report as drug exposure. Let's discuss CYP2D6 as an example of this portion of our report. We can see that based on the patient's genotype, this patient would be considered a poor metabolizer. Poor metabolizer status leads to a risk of elevated serum levels or decreased production of active metabolites for medications that are metabolized by this enzyme. For more information on how to assess the impact of pharmacokinetic variants on medications, please see our video on GenMed Pro, our Smarter Precision Gene Drug Interaction Software. Following the gene variations pages, the next section of the professional PGX report is the Gene Drug Interaction Summary. These pages serve as a more concise overview of the patient's pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic variants as they relate to specific medications or medication classes. These pages display approximately 130 medications approved for psychiatric or neurologic indications and organizes drugs based on therapeutic class. To orient you to these pages, the leftmost column will list the specific drug names. To the left of each drug name, you may see an RX or notepad symbol. These symbols indicate that specific pharmacogenetic information is included in the FDA-approved labeling for the medication, or that there is specific pharmacogenetic-based guidance for that medication from either the Clinical Pharmacogenetic Implementation Consortium, also known as CPIC, or the Dutch Pharmacogenetic Working Group, known as DPWG. 
This information can be found easily at farmgkb.org. In the next columns, you will see a concise overview of any pharmacodynamic-based information for a particular medication, as well as the gene or genes associated with this information. Finally, the right side of the page highlights the pharmacokinetic pathways associated with each medication, as well as the drug exposure column, which highlights changes in blood or brain concentrations of the medication based on a patient's pharmacokinetic genes. An up arrow in this column identifies increased drug exposure, whereas a down arrow would represent decreased drug exposure. At times, you may also see an up and a down arrow together. This would mean that the patient has variants that are affecting drug exposure in opposite directions, making it difficult to predict the overall exposure for that particular medication. Access to a patient's personal drug exposure may prompt a clinician to consider alternative medication options or to implement a personalized dose. Let's use paroxetine as an example for the interpretation of this page. As we can see highlighted in the pharmacodynamic associations column, paroxetine and the other SSRIs were associated with a lower odds of remission and response, as well as an increased risk of side effects in Caucasians. This information is based on the patient's SLC6A4SS genotype. Now, if the patient was of Asian ethnicity, literature regarding the patient's BDNF-Belmet genotype shows an increased odds of response or remission with SSRI medications. Furthermore, if we look under the drug exposure column, we see an up arrow. This up arrow is in reference to the increased drug exposure to paroxetine that can be expected due to the patient's CYP2D6 poor metabolizer status, as well as the patient's variation at the ABCB1 gene. This increase in exposure may lead to the consideration of a dose adjustment or the utilization of an alternative therapy. The next page of our report is the diagnosis specific summary. Think of this as your at a glance page. This page provides a graphical depiction of medications indicated for specific disease states, with medications and treatments being shifted on the plot based on a patient's genetic interactions. These summary pages are currently available for depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, ADHD, and pain management. At the top of the summary page, you will see three columns, alert or caution, standard options, and pharmacogenetic or PGX guided options. Medications or therapies that appear in white and are not shifted from the center of the graph indicate options with no gene drug interactions. A shift to the left of the page indicates a genetic alert or caution associated with this drug, such as a higher drug exposure, for example. The more significant the genetic variations, the greater the shift will be on the graph. These boxes will also appear in a yellow, orange, or red color. Notice how paroxetine is shifted to the left of the graph under alert or caution. This would signal that there are important factors a clinician will want to review prior to considering or utilizing paroxetine. Medications or therapies that are shifted to the right of the page indicate pharmacogenetic guided options. These are treatment modalities that may have an increased likelihood of effectiveness or tolerance based on the patient's genetics. These boxes will also appear blue on the graph. Additionally, you will notice several icons throughout the graph. A legend of these icons is found at the bottom of the page. These icons serve as a quick overview of specific gene-drug interactions and tell you why a drug was shifted on the graph. Last but not least, the final page of our report includes the patient's Genomind RX Metatype card. This wallet card includes information on six CYP450 enzymes that are responsible for the metabolism of medications and identifies a patient's specific genotype and activity profile. The Metatype card serves as a wonderful resource to be shared by patients with other prescribing healthcare providers. I hope this overview has been beneficial in further exploring all that the Genomind Professional PGX Express report has to offer. For more information on our product, please visit genomind.com, and for further questions or information regarding the interpretation of a report, please schedule a clinical consultation with one of our medical science liaisons or utilize our on-demand clinical hotline. These services are provided with every test, so whether you have a quick question or need to go more in depth, our team is here to help. Thanks for watching.